Army War Memorial overnight. The destruction includes painted messages against the military and the war in the Middle East. The three teams were picked up in the early morning hours and the evidence was left to the sea. Some people sure have short memories, and those who are too young to know need to be taught. Come on, I, I want to show you guys something. like for all of our veterans who are here with us today to come and stand here in the front and face the audience if you would please right now if you've served in one of our armed forces one of our military arm u.s armed forces i'd like for you to come and stand in this front look at these guys aren't they great aren't they great And one of our young people are bringing this flag up and presenting it. And if one of you could hold that flag out. And now I would like for you out there to stand and salute these who served our country. Would you do that and salute them? On this Veterans Day weekend, 
we stop to recognize those who have served in the past for our great nation. Each of these men fought and served for you because they thought that you were worth it. And they thought that freedom was worth it. And you and that freedom was worth fighting for. So we want to be sure to thank these veterans on this Veterans Day. But we also need to remember that the freedoms that these folks fought for in the past are under attack today. They are under full assault. And we need to stand against the tyranny that we're seeing in this country today. The tyranny, the assault on this nation, like many of us have not seen in the past. We need to take a stand against the tyranny of a radical federal government. And I say this online, we need to make sure that we are standing for the freedoms that these folks fought for. Amen? Amen. And make sure that we stand for righteousness, for the rightness of the gospel, and make sure that people know about Jesus. There is a, a full-out assault on the Constitution and on the freedoms that the Constitution guarantees. And we have people who are trying to turn this nation into a globalist, socialist nation, and we need to make sure that we are among those who will say, no, not on my watch. Amen? Amen. Let's sing about it. Salute them again as we sing. Just give them your salute. Let's sing together. My country is a heaven we humbly bow before you today we we uh, thank you for the freedoms that we have in Christ we thank you that you've set us free from the chains of sin the tyranny of sin we thank you for your forgiveness and grace for the new life that we have been given in Jesus Christ we thank you Lord for this country and what this country means but we know that the many of the freedoms that uh, uh, we have enjoyed, uh, the freedom of uh, to express our religious beliefs openly, even in the public square, the freedom of speech, uh, the freedom to share thoughts and ideas without reprisal, all of these things are under attack right now. There are many who are poised to lose their jobs because of the tyranny that we see, Lord. We pray that you will help us to stand for, up for freedom that we have in the power of the Holy Spirit, especially that freedom to be able to share our faith openly with others, Lord. Under attack right now, we pray, Father. We pray, Lord, for the Supreme Court that is currently hearing uh, um, 
uh, about uh, the whole uh, abortion issue and, and, the, and the right to the life of the, even the unborn under attack literally millions of, of precious lives destroyed because of a law that was not constitutional in the first place. So Lord, I just pray that you will help us as a nation to return to you like the sign on the street on the corner for everyone to see. The solution is simple. We must return. America must return to faith in God. One nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. So bless us now, Lord. We pray for the moral situation, the spiritual situation. And Lord, we as a church family are doing our part to lead the way to make sure that we're sharing the gospel with others and helping people to see the truth and to see that you are the way, the truth, and the life. So bless us now, Lord. We love you, and we're committed to you as a church family, and we thank you for those who served in our armed forces in the past and for those who are currently serving who are also under attack these days. Lord, we pray for them as well. Bless us now. We pray for our law enforcement and, uh, and for corporations that are under uh, a, a terrible attack these days and, and the media and all these things, Father. We just pray for a mighty move of your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise the Lord, huh? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So we thank you. Thank you for those men and women who have served and who are serving. Well, we had a great time last Sunday. We had uh, nearly 30 people who were at our new attendees lunch. Uh, I'm not sure we have some of them today. The rest of them, I'm not sure where they are. So we need to make sure that maybe the lunch, I thought of the lunch was great. I don't know myself. The, the lasagna was great. Everything was great. But anyway, we just need to keep moving and working. And we're thankful for the 30 or so that attended our new attendees lunch last a uh, week uh, at the Bible study last Tuesday. I think that probably was great too. And, and they'll continue to do that uh, the first and third, um, uh, two, huh? First. The first and, and third Tuesdays for the Bible study, right. So a uh, men's coffee time, thank you for wearing your name tag so we can get to know one another. We'll continue to do that. The men's coffee time Wednesday at 10 o'clock at the Pinon Cafe. The children's Bible quizzing on Fridays. They're gearing up for a quiz down in the valley coming up here fairly soon. So pray for our children's Bible quizzers as they uh, learn the Word of God. Uh, men's breakfast this Saturday. Men, come on out this Saturday at, at 8 o'clock. We'll have a great breakfast together. Uh, breakfast have been really great since the women have been uh, making the breakfast, so the ladies. So we're grateful for that too, huh? So uh, no burned biscuits lately, so that's kind of nice. So 8 o'clock this Saturday morning, men come on out, invite somebody. Sunday school classes continue Sunday mornings at 9 o'clock. We have a great adult class. Ronnie is teaching a class right now uh, at 9 o'clock on, on what it means to be a part of the vine, the vine and the branches. And I heard a, a lot of laughter as we were meeting in our class. And so a lot of good stuff. So Sunday mornings at 9 o'clock, we have our Sunday school classes be sure to take advantage of that. Um, I want to uh, also let you know that we're going to be having a special class. Uh, a friend of mine who is quite the evangelist has offered to come and, uh, and teach a class on sharing your faith without fear. Learning how to share your faith easily, without fear, comfortably, uh, non-oppressively or anything, and just being able to share. Uh, if you are interested in taking that class, we haven't come up with a time yet. Right now, I just want to know how many are interested in signing up for that class. It's a three-session class. Uh, they'll meet uh, for, uh, for an hour, once a week, for three uh, three weeks, or we can do it however the folks want to do it. But if you want to learn how to share your faith with others in a very comfortable, uh, easy, non-combative kind of a way, uh, sign up. There's a sign-up sheet in the back. I'm hoping that that class will be full. And um, when we get it organized uh, for as far as the time, we might need to do it. Uh, some of them in the daytime, some of them in the evening, uh, maybe, maybe a Sunday afternoon or evening, I don't know. But once we get the interest level, then we'll figure out when we'll do the, those classes.
and uh, my buddy, my friend will come and share uh, his way. He's quite the evangelist, and he wants to share how he does that in a very comfortable way so that you can then begin learning how to share your faith in a very... We, we, people, my goodness, look what's happening in our world today. People need the Lord, right? The world is in the condition that it's in because people need Christ. And so we need to be able to actively share our faith with others as the Lord has told us to do. So sign up in the back. Don't forget, please do sign up for that class and, uh, and you'll learn how to do that. We're going to be having our all-church Thanksgiving dinner on Sunday, the, I think it's the 20th or the 21st, whatever that Sunday is. Uh, so invite your friends to come. That's a chance for you to invite people to come and be a part of that uh, fun morning together as we meet together around the table and give our thanks to God. So the Sunday before Thanksgiving, we'll have our, our Thanksgiving dinner. And speaking of thanks, I want to thank you for your faithful giving to the Lord and, and keeping the ministry of the church going and doing the work of the kingdom through your giving around the world. We have some birthdays uh, that we want to celebrate. Sylvia Smith is today. Give Sylvia a call. Let her know you miss her. And uh, um, her birthday is today. Pat Felix is Tuesday. Where's Pat? She's somewhere in the back, okay? All right. She's kind of filling in for Jerry while Jerry's away. So uh, uh, Pat Felix is Tuesday. Karen Hamilton is on Wednesday. Where, where did I see Karen? In the back, we celebrate your birthday on Wednesday. Christy Horsley is Friday. So we have, we have lots of birthdays this week. And, of course, George and Jerry Barris, their anniversary is, this, is today, actually. Uh, they've been married for 24 years today. They're off celebrating uh, with their family back in Wisconsin. So um, we want to wish them a happy anniversary. But let's sing happy birthday to our birthday girls. It looks like it's the girls, Sylvia, Pat, Karen, we celebrate your birthday. Let's sing together. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Give them a hand. Let them know how much you love them. Where else on a Sunday morning would you be singing happy birthday to people? It's exclusive right here to Payson First Church of the Nazarene. We love our people and we're kind of glad you were born. So, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, we want to lift the name of Jesus up on high these days, don't we? Jesus said, if I... Oh, oh yeah, Ronnie told me. Better give me a, a, a minute. Go ahead. I want us to know that as for our church for the missions, we ended up getting the Award of Excellence and the Priority Mission One Award and the Award of Excellence. We got both of those. And then on top of that, we received a letter from Chad, um, who we had had here as a deputation um, missionary. It says, my assignment has come to an end, the one here at home. I wanted to drop you a note to say thank you. It was such a blessing to be able to share with all of you. I hope that seeing how churches are at work serving their communities in South America has been an encouragement for you. Thank you so much for the opportunity to share and for your continued prayers and support. So we will be praying for Chad, and we're glad he's here. Also, too, we had, um, we've been doing the water bottles. It, it will not make, um, we won't make a lot of money if we have to uh, drive down there and spin the gas. But if we're already going down there, that's a blessing because we, the water bottles came to $25.80. And since we were already going down there, it didn't hurt to uh, take the water bottles yep. and so we did that we'll still be collecting them in the hall and we'll take them and we'll use this for missions this month is for our, our monthly emphasis is the Thanksgiving offering and that Thanksgiving offering takes care of our missionaries insurance and different things so anyway we'll be taking that at the end of the month we also had um, a women's meeting here on Thursday and we had about 11 people here and we had a wonderful time so if you are 
are in, I, it wasn't in the calendar because this is something new that we're doing. But our next one will be the third Thursday and we will be having another um, time of fellowship. It's not, uh, it's a devotional and then I believe we're gonna be playing some games. So we wanna ask you to come and enjoy the, your fellowship with other people. Amen, great, great time for the ladies as well. Let's sing together, shall we? Lord, we lift your name on high today. sin for us on that cross. He took the sins of the entire human race upon himself, suffered that death penalty for us in our place so that we could be made righteous in the sight of God. We celebrate that as we prepare our hearts for communion. We want to think about what Jesus did for us on that cross.
Jesus Messiah. Name above all names, blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, the rescue for sin. for what you did for us on that cross. The Lamb of God, the Lamb of God who came to be our Savior, to give himself as that sacrificial lamb on that cross for you and for me so that we can be set free and be made righteous before God. Hallelujah. That's the gospel. That's what we share with people, to let people know that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Their hearts changed, their lives changed, filled with hope, filled with joy, filled with peace, and become a good and godly person as they live this life. Praise the Lord. Let's sing about it now.
thank you, Lord, that you came to take our place, that you came taking all of our sin, all of our sins against God, all of our sins against humanity, all of the sin within us. The scripture says there is no one righteous, not even one in your sight, O oh God, but Jesus took all of that sin, all of that guilt upon himself and gave his life and suffered the death penalty that we deserved in our place and then was raised again on the third day. And all who believe in him are raised to new life. We celebrate that today, Lord. And if there's someone here this morning that does not know you as Savior, has not placed their faith in you and what you did for us, even before we begin to take the, the, this communion cup and, and the bread and, and remember what you did for us, Lord. I pray that that person will come to faith in Jesus right now. That your Holy Spirit will convict them of their need of a Savior. And help that one to say, God, Father, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for my sin. I'm sorry for my way waywardness. I'm sorry for my rebellion against you. I'm sorry for leaving you out and running my own life and ruling my own life. And it's become a mess. And I want to come to you, Lord. And I want my sins forgiven. Please forgive me, Lord, of all of my sins. And help me, Lord, now to trust in you and be forgiven and set free and know the hope that we have of eternal life. Bless us now, Father, we pray in Jesus' name as we prepare for this communion table. I'd like for each of us, if you're ready to come forward, I have them separated into two separate uh, room uh, lines so that you can come and pick up your cup and give thanks to the Lord and, and take it back to your seat. And as we sing this song, we'll prepare our hearts for receiving that communion cup and uh, bread and and remembrance of what Jesus did for us. This is a sacred moment. Let the Lord have his way in your heart. Would you stand with me and make your way to <coughs> these trays and pick up your communion cup. Father, bless us now as we prepare our hearts to remember what you did for us as you taught us to do in Jesus' name. Come on, come on ahead.
respond to the Lord's invitation, His grace being offered to us all, His mercy, His forgiveness being offered to all who believe in the shed blood, the broken body, and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus. On the night he was betrayed, the Lord took bread and he broke it. And he said, eat this as often as you do it in remembrance of me. In remembrance of the broken body of our Lord Jesus Christ on that cross in our place. Take the bread in remembrance of Jesus. And then Jesus took the cup and he shared it with his disciples and he said, this cup represents my own shed blood which is shed for you for the remission of sins. Thank you. Jesus, thank you, Lord, that you were willing to shed your own life's blood, take the death penalty that we deserved upon yourself. Drink this as often as you do it in remembrance of the shed blood of Jesus Christ on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. Bless this now, Lord, I pray. Bless it to our bodies. Bless it to our souls. Bless it to our spirit. And help us to never, ever, ever become weary of, of remembering, but always remember afresh and anew what you did for us and how you loved us and continue to love us even now. Even to this day, you continue loving us and offering your grace and forgiveness to us. And we're so grateful because we know one day we will stand before you, God, and, our, and we will give an account of our lives. And if it wasn't for the shed blood and resurrection, the broken body and shed blood and resurrection of Jesus, we would be hopelessly lost for all eternity because none of us can be righteous enough on our own without you, Jesus. So we thank you. And everybody who believes this, say amen, amen, and amen, and amen. Praise the Lord. Aren't you glad for Jesus today? Amen. On this day, we remember what Jesus did for us. And we also remember that Jesus, we're not done yet. Come on up, guys. Oh, come on. Give him a hand. Give him some encouragement. Give him some encouragement, okay? We're not done yet, okay? All right. All right. We are made one in the body of Christ, aren't we? We're made one together in the body of Christ. Let's sing about that now, can we? One.
and aren't we grateful for Angeline too and our sound crew in the back who are always so always there they're here their practices when we practice together Wednesdays and Sunday mornings and we just appreciate them so very much would you stand with me in honor of the Word of God as we look at at um, the uh, Word of God in Ephesians chapter 4 can we bring that up that PowerPoint hopefully it's there it is okay all right cool awesome so we're looking at Ephesians 4 um, verses um, 1 through 16 today if you'd like to turn that with me in your Bibles the words will also appear on the screen but it's good to have the Word of God so that you know that what I'm putting up here is actually agreeing with the Word of God right and then I'm not preaching nonsense but sharing directly from the Word itself may God bless his word as a prisoner for the Lord then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling that you have received be completely humble and gentle be patient bearing with one another in love doesn't that sound like what the church should be all about you know just that tremendous love for one another and when somebody messes up like I do all the time somebody's saying you know I forgive you it's okay just don't do it again bearing with one another in love make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace there is one body one spirit just as you were called to one hope when you were called one lord one faith one baptism one god and father of all who is over all and through all and in all but to each of us grace has been given as Christ apportioned it this is why it says when he ascended on high he took many captives and gave gifts to his people he took many captives talking about that spiritual warfare and marching back with all of the prizes and then he gives the prizes to the people he took many captives and gave gifts to his people what does he ascended mean except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions he who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe keep that thought in mind in order to fill the whole universe so Christ himself gave the apostles the prophets the evangelists the pastors and the teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Keep that thought in your mind. Attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ, then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves, blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. From him the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work father bless us now bless this word to us help us to grow in it to get it to understand it to live by it and see the body of christ being built into maturity and christ likeness more and more as we see the days approaching to the end we, we are committed, Lord, committed to doing the work of the kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. May God bless his word to your, to your hearts, to your soul, to your minds. The title of my message today is kind of a tongue twister. Becoming a part of the building up of the body of Christ. Say that quickly. Becoming a part of the building up of the body of Christ. Okay? Catchy title. 
but it says it all of what the God's Word is trying to get to us today. Becoming a part of the building up of the body of Christ. For those of you who are new to us this morning or here for the first time, we've been looking into God's Word into, uh, and discovering God's clear call on us as Christians and upon the church as a whole, God's clear call to us on our lives, the seven essential systems of the church, the seven essential ministries. It's what the church does. It's who we are. <coughs> it's what God wants us to be about in these days. And we're focusing now on essential system number three, which is assimilation. In assimilation. We've talked about worship. We've talked about evangelism. Now we're talking about that assimilation. Our goal is, to, is for, for God's people to not just coerce somebody into praying a so-called sinner's prayer. Folks, uh, folks our, our goal is to lead people to saving, life-saving, life-changing faith in Jesus and then incorporating them into the body of Christ. Amen? So it's not just about getting somebody to pray a prayer. It is about getting them not just saved, but a part of the kingdom, a part, an active part of the body of Christ, leading people into Christ. The call of Christ, of Christ on our lives is to build up the body of Christ, which is the church. The church is the body, is to be seen as the body of Jesus Christ in this world today. If you want to see Christ visible in the world today, where should people be able to see Jesus? In our lives, each of us, and in the church as a whole. The world should be seeing Jesus exalted and, and the Spirit of Christ within the church. So we're committing ourselves to become uh, mature Christians ourselves, and, and then we commit our lives to leading others into becoming mature uh, Christ-like believers and finding their places of ministry within the body of Christ. God's Word reminds us that there is only one church. Amen? Amen? There is only one church in this world, one true church in this world, and we as followers of Jesus are united together as one in Christ. Wherever you go, anywhere in this world, we find true brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen? That is the church. It's not about the name on the door. Okay? It's not about the name on the door or the sign out on the street. It is about the body of Jesus Christ in this world. And the world ought to be seeing Jesus in all of his fullness within the body of Christ. Amen to that? That's what it's all about. One church united together in Christ. You folks know that the number seven is a very significant number in the Bible, don't you? The number seven, it represents wholeness or completeness, or you could say perfection. It, the number seven signifies wholeness, completeness, perfection. And our scripture lesson in God's Word tells us that we are united in Christ in, guess how many ways? It names seven ways. So we see that wholeness. We're united together in this wholeness, in these seven perfect ways. And I want us to look at them together briefly this morning. The first is the fact that we are one body. There is one body. The Bible describes the church as the body of Christ. He is the head. We are the body. And we see that phrase, the body of Christ, three times just in this scripture lesson alone. In verse 12, in verse 15, in verse 16, the church is described as the body of Christ. In 1 Corinthians 12, 12, we read this, just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. And then verse 27 says, Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. Amen? 
each one of you, if you're a believer today in Jesus Christ, you've received Christ as your Savior, you have been born again of the Spirit, you are a part of the body of Christ. And there are millions of us around the world. Amen. Okay? We see the world and it's evil and we think, oh, what's going on? Well, we need to understand there are millions and maybe even more millions and millions and millions of people who are part of the body of Christ and each one of you is a part of it but what I really want you to notice here is God's vision God's vision of what the church is supposed to be like what the body of Christ what is God's desire what does God want to see what did Christ give his life to create what is he in Ephesians 5 he says I he he gave himself for this what is that? What is God's vision? Ephesians 1.23 says, The church, which is his body, the fullness of him. The fullness of him who fills everything in every way. Do you get it? Do you get it? The church is to be the fullness of Christ and be filled with the spirit of Jesus, the, the body of Christ. Jesus wants his church to be the fullness of him. His spirit, not our spirit, not the sinful fleshly spirit, not the, not the, 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 the selfish me first, it's all about me. No, the fullness of Christ in each of us and in all of us together. Our scripture lessons, uh, lesson verses 12 and 13 describes the church as the body of Christ, the very body of Christ himself being built up in Christ, unified in the faith, mature and attaining the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. The whole measure of the fullness of Christ. That's our goal. That's what we want. It's what we should all desire, seeing Christ within us, his spirit, maturity in his spirit. Jesus is the head. We are his body, and you are a part of that body. Hallelujah. Amen. You are a part of that body. Think about what that means. You are included. You are a part of the body of Jesus Christ here on this earth. And then we see that we are united by one spirit. One spirit. Folks, there is only one spirit, and that's the Holy Spirit. Amen? There is only one. God reveals himself as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. the Holy Spirit. There's only one. The third person of the triune Godhead, Almighty God, revealing himself as Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. They all work together as one, and that same oneness of Spirit, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit also operating within us. And it unites us all together. Folks, listen, we need to think about this. It is the power and the work of the Holy Spirit that draws people to Jesus. It is the powerful Spirit of God that convicts of sin, that helps people to see their need of a Savior, and that leads them to pray that prayer of, of, of faith to receive Jesus as Savior. And it's the Holy Spirit who draws people into the body of Christ. It is the work of the Spirit that draws us to the Father, that draws us into the church. We need to think about this because this is so essential. <clears throat> the church is not just some kind of earthly organization. The church is not just a secular social club and should not be treated as that. Yes, there is fellowship. Yes, there is those kinds of things. But folks, the church is uniquely made up of individuals who have been drawn together by the power of the Holy Spirit of God himself, working in each of us as individual believers and working in us as a whole. We are made up by one spirit. In Romans chapter 8, we read, You are not in the realm of the flesh but are in the realm of the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God lives in you. If the Spirit of God is actually in you. And if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, 
then they do not belong to Christ. Folks, this is a powerful message here, isn't it? If the Spirit of Christ is not operating in you, then you don't even belong to Christ. It gives us pause to think, do I really have the Spirit of God Himself dwelling within me? Have I truly been born again? New life? Forgiven of my sins and the Spirit saying to me, Abba, Father, operating in me to where I sense that God truly is my Heavenly Father. Okay? But if Christ is in you, then the Spirit does what? Gives you life. Hallelujah. And if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, then He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of His Spirit who lives within you. That's that eternal life. You know, you know that you know that you know that the Spirit of God is in you. You've been born again, and you know that you've been adopted, and you know you've been given that gift of eternal life. The Spirit within you Folks, we have that one spirit. Amen? One spirit. One spirit operating. We are united together by the Holy Spirit who dwells within us. We're united together by the one who has led you to saving faith in Jesus and led you to becoming a part of, of the body of Christ and has drawn you into his church. We are made one by that spirit. We have one hope. How many of you have that hope in Jesus Christ? We have that hope. In fact, I don't even call it hope. I think hope is probably not really, even though the Scripture uses the word hope, but I don't think the word actually, actually gives the fullness of that. I like to call it certainty. Amen? That, it's a hope that is certain. That certainty. We share the same hope. We share the same certainty that we have been saved by our mutual faith in the same Savior, Jesus. Ephesians chapter 2 tells us that Almighty God is our Heavenly Father, that He made us alive. Our Father has made us alive with Christ, has raised us up with Christ, and has seated us with Christ in the heavenly realms. Now, how many of you are seated with Christ in the heavenly realms right now? And you're going, no, 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 I'm seated right here in Pace and First Church of the Nazarene. That's the whole point. The whole point is, yeah, you're here physically, but you know that God has already sealed the deal. You're on your way to heaven. He saw, it's as though it's already done. Amen? Amen? It's as though that it's already done. It's a done deal because of your faith in Jesus. You're as good as already there as far as God is concerned. That's good news, isn't it? Yes. As far as God is concerned, if you breathe your last breath today, guess what? You're there. Because you're already there as far as he's concerned because of your faith in Jesus. Verse, that's the hope that we have. We're united together by that hope that we have in Jesus. Verse 7 tells us in the coming ages that God is going to show us his incomparable riches of, in his, of his grace. He's, he's going to do it. He's going to be showing you his incomparable riches of his grace in the coming ages. We're not there, but folks, is as good as already done because of your faith in Jesus. Go ahead. This is the church of Jesus, the church of the Nazarene, Jesus Christ. So say his name. It's Jesus. Amen? Amen. Ephesians chapter 1 just kind of drives the truth home when it says, when you believed, how many of you have believed, you've made the decision, you're a believer in Jesus, When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal. Amen. The promised Holy Spirit who is a deposit. God's deposit within you, guaranteeing our inheritance. Amen? Amen? That's why the ministry of the Holy Spirit is so important. We understand that. Guaranteeing your inheritance. Praise the Lord. It's as good as done. In John chapter 3, we read, Dear friends, now. I like that word now here. Now. We are children of God. And what we will be has not yet been made known. 
<laughs> but we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. All who have this what? All who have this hope <coughs> purify themselves. Now, that doesn't mean that we can purify ourselves in anything that we can do ourselves. But, folks, we're talking about the intent of the heart, right? The intent of the heart. In other words, we make a choice that we're going with Jesus, and we do what Jesus wants us to do. We purify ourselves by our faith in Christ and by living that holy life. We purify ourselves just as he is pure. The Scripture says when we see him, we'll be like him. Okay? So we need to get ready for that, right? We need to get ready for that by, by, by being a part of the kingdom, by believing, trusting, living each day. That's what we mean by purifying ourselves just as he is pure. Praise the Lord. So we're unified together by this same wonderful hope. We also have one Lord one Lord. We sing that chorus sometimes. He is Lord. He is Lord. He has risen from the dead, and He is Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue. <coughs> Amen. His Lord. <coughs> Praise the Lord. Okay? Romans 10, 9 says, If you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. If you declare with your mouth, that means you boldly testify, Jesus Christ is my Lord. I've surrendered my life to him. He is my Lord. And believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You will be what? Saved. You will be saved. You will be saved. Romans 6.23 says, The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through or in Christ Jesus our Lord. Jesus didn't come to just be the Savior. He came to be the Lord, the master of your life. Amen. And a Christian is one who has surrendered completely. A sanctified believer, especially, is one who's completely surrendered their whole heart and made him Lord of our lives. Philippians chapter 2 tells us that God exalted Christ to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We're united together by the same Lord. He's, the, he's your Lord. He's my Lord. We're united together in that as the church, the body of Christ. One, one faith. We share that same faith together in the same Savior, Jesus Christ. Galatians 3.26 says, You are all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. We are all children of God. If you've truly believed in Jesus as our Savior, that he gave his life on the cross for me, and you've placed your faith in Jesus, then you, I love what John wrote in 1 John chapter 3. Now we are children of God, and that is what we are. I love that. I love that phrase. And that is what we are, children of God, because of our mutual faith. And that faith binds us together as one. One baptism. The word baptism in the Bible generally speaks more in a, in a spiritual sense, if you will, of how we are spiritually connected, spiritually identified with Christ. And when we talk about baptism, the physical act of baptism, it's, we, we, we talk about the, being baptized and so on, but, but, and, and that's great, and we believe in that, and we see the importance of that, but what really counts is the spiritual connection that that physical baptism means, right? Spiritually identified with Christ. In Romans chapter 6, we read, Don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? That's where it talks about, I identify by spiritually by, to into the death of Jesus for me. We were baptized into his death. We were therefore buried with him. 
through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, here it comes, that we too may live a new life. We are baptized into his death. Our, uh, every true Christian spiritually identifies ourselves in the, by faith in the, in the death of Jesus. When he suffered and died on that cross, we spiritually identify ourselves with him and what he did and in the resurrection of Jesus. As Christ died for us, he took the penalty of our sins upon himself. And as Christ was buried, that old sinful life is buried with him. And then as Christ was raised from the dead, we too have a brand new life. Purified by the blood of the Lamb. And we live out that new life in Christ. Every true Christian identifies by baptism, by baptism uh, physically, but mostly spiritually into Christ Jesus. That's another way that we are united together as the body of Christ. And then finally, one God and Father of all. One God and Father of all. Ephesians 4, 6, one God and Father of all who is over all and through all and in all. We are, I, we are made one together by that one true and living God who loved us so much that he gave his one and only sin. Our God, the one true and living God, the creator of the universe, is the source of all that happens within the church by means of his spirit. Folks, we need to understand that God, by his spirit, is dwelling within us. If we're a true believer, God by his spirit, that's why the scripture says, don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Do you not realize your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, the dwelling place, the tabernacle of God himself by his spirit dwelling within you? He abides in every truly born again and sanctified believer. God's power penetrates the whole church because of his spirit dwelling within us. He is sovereign over all. That God who dwells is sovereign over all. The Lord is exalted over the nations. The Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. Think about that. He is to be feared. Guess what? That God, that Father, that Creator is dwelling within you. And so we live our lives holy unto Him through our mutual faith in Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit dwelling within us. We are made one with God and one with each other. So the church... The body of Christ is meant to be the fullness of Christ on the earth. Amen? The body of Christ on this earth. We need to realize that and remember that. But we also know there is one body, but with many parts. How many of you are a part? How many of you, uh, I like that scripture where it says, we're joined together by a ligament, by every ligament. Guess what? You're a ligament. <laughs> or you might be a kidney, or you might be a you know, whatever. You're a part. Many, many parts that make up that one body. We know that Jesus is the head of the church. We understand that. He calls the shots. He calls the orders. And the various body parts do their thing according to what the head says. Okay? And we are to think of ourselves, each and every one of us, as a part of the whole. And and what are we supposed to be doing? What, are, what is this supposed to be all about? The scripture tells us, from him the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. How many of you think of yourself as unessential in the church? No, you're not. Not according to the Word of God. Every part, every part doing the work of the kingdom, every part doing its work to build the whole up in the Spirit and in the love of Christ. The idea, folks, is find your part and then doing that until your last breath. 
Amen? Amen? Never think that you're too old. My goodness, Abraham was how old when he had Isaac? You know? Never think that you're too old to be used by God. Moses was like 80 years old when he led the children and people out of Israel. Never, ever, ever think that you're too old to be a part of the body of Christ and that, and that you don't have something that God still wants you to do. If you're still breathing breath on this side of heaven, God has something for you to do to be a part of the whole in building up the body of Christ. Amen? Find your part. Do it. So what is assimilation? We see the church, the body of Christ. Each one of us is a part, and we all have a part to do and a part to play. Many, many parts all working together to build up the body towards more and more Christ-likeness. So what's assimilation all about? Bringing others into the body. It's that simple. Amen? Amen. Bringing others into the body. God has a part for everybody to play. Each of you already active or mature in your faith and a part of the body of Christ. You're growing spiritually. You're becoming more and more Christ-like all the time, finding your special place of ministry within the body, doing your part to help us all to be filled with the fullness of Christ. But then we also look outward and say, each of us committing ourselves to going out and realizing that we need to lead others to saving faith in Jesus and then bringing them into the body of Christ as well, helping them to become a part, helping them to find their place as God gifts them, not only saves them, but gives them spiritual gifts. The goal is to fill the whole earth with the glory of Jesus Christ. That's the goal to fill the whole earth with the presence and glory of God by His Spirit working with each, within each and every one of us. The goal is more and more people becoming a part of the building up of the body of Christ. <laughs> Thus the title. Becoming a part of the building up of the body of Christ. We are a part. We're building. We're working together. Everybody doing their thing to make us more like Jesus. And then helping others to become a part of the building up of the body of Christ as well. That's assimilation. So our goal, folks, is not just leading someone to pray a sinner's prayer. So many people think that that's just what it's all about. I've got to get somebody and coerce them to pray a prayer so I can stick a feather in my hat. One and done. Came to the altar. I did my thing, and now I'm good, and then I just go back to living my life. Mm -mm. The goal is not just to lead someone in praying a sinner's prayer, but to lead others to saving, life-changing faith in Jesus and becoming a part of the body of Christ. And we teach them, and we help them, and they help them to find their vital part in the church as well. The call of Christ on our lives is to build up the body of Christ, which is the church here on this earth. We're united together as one. We are one church together. We cooperate. We work with other fellowships, other bodies of Christ, you know, around, uh, 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 I mean, other churches and fellowships and wherever. We participate with our missionaries around the world. That's what we're all working together to build up the body of Christ, united together as one in the power of the Spirit, working hard to build up the body of Jesus Christ, our Savior, all for the glory of God. Father in heaven, thank you for this time together. We love you, Lord. We're glad that you've called us. We're glad that you've changed us. We're glad for the oneness that we have. We're glad, Lord, for the, the uh, uh, fellowship of the saints. We're glad for the kingdom. We're glad that you've given us the gift of eternal life and your salvation so, so rich and so free because of our faith in Jesus. And now help us, Lord, to fulfill your kingdom's purposes by, by remembering that it's about that, not just the worship and the evangelism, but also the assimilation. Help us to be a part of that, Father, I pray. We give you the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's sing about it, shall we? We are the body of Christ. Let's sing that together, shall we? Stand with me. 
as we prepare to serve the Lord. One. from your presence, from your, from this place, but not from your presence, Lord, as we commit ourselves to being a part of the body of Christ, even out there, part of the body, doing the work of the kingdom each and every day. Help us, Lord, to, to realize that there's someone out there that you want each of us to lead by faith into saving faith in Jesus. Bless us now as we go and help us to lift you up in the days ahead. In Jesus' name, and everybody who agrees with this, say amen and amen. God bless you. You are dismissed. Lord, I lift your name on high.